having a reliable uh, cross-chain system basically allows the assets that your financial system generates to be purchased by people outside of your financial system, which means that the financial system will experience net capital inflows, which is fundamentally what everyone working and making and defining and legislating and regulating a financial system want. They want their financial system to receive capital from outside in exchange for assets from inside of it, creating net demand. If you generate the best uh, asset possible on a chain, but that chain is not connected to the other chains where people have stable coins or cryptocurrencies that they want to exchange for that asset, your wonderful asset is blocked from that market. That market on those other chains simply cannot buy that asset because it can't send the money or the stable coin or the cryptocurrency in exchange for the asset. It's, it's basically that simple. In the new version of the financial system that is now being powered by Web3 and blockchain technologies, it is critical that you have highly secure, highly reliable, and compliant cross-chain transactions because A, there's a lot of bridge hacks that consistently happen that many of the bridge creators today still haven't learned from where they use like one or two nodes and, and, and get hacked consistently. B, you have a dynamic where you end up seeing um, an inability for people in regulated contexts that have you know, hundreds of billions, trillions of dollars to transact with each other or with people in public chain unregulated contexts because compliance is not defined or automated. And then the third critical thing you need is you need the, the cross-chain system to be hyper-connected to all the places to and from which you want to do transactions. Chainlink CCIP is now starting to meet all of these conditions in one system. You have a very high degree of security and reliability for high value transactions. You have the ability to automate compliance and make sure that transactions can comply with various laws and regulations. And finally, you have a kind of hyper-connectivity so that the counterparties on any chain that could ever want to acquire your asset can now acquire it through CCIP. This is basically the direction of CCIP. I think it's going to be a critical building block of uh, what we call the Internet of Contracts. And together with the CRE, the Chainlink Runtime Environment, I think it's going to be increasingly easy to compose the conditions and the policies under which cross-chain transactions happen, not just for millions of dollars, but for billions. Not just at the level of um, unregulated DeFi, but at the level of institutional, traditional finance, and even government level cross chain for CBDCs, which the chain the community is working on very heavily as well. And there's some real adoption and interest from the central banking community. So at the end of the day, the, the cross chain um, CCIP primitive is a critical building block of how every new financial system will operate because it's what will connect all of the different chains, whether they're central bank chains, TradFi related chains, or DeFi public chains. All of that is now merging into a single internet of contracts that will have to operate against a single standard to both transmit the value and the data related to the transaction. That's one of the, uh, one of the other interesting things that's happening here is that historically you would transfer the payment over one rail, you would transfer the asset over another rail, and you would transfer the data about the payment and the asset on a third or fourth set of rails. Now what's happening with something like CCIP is you can transfer the asset, the payment, and all the data related to both the asset and the payment for compliance purposes on one rail, the CCIP rail, the cross-chain interoperability rail, because the smart contract houses, can house the payment mechanism, it can house the asset ownership, and it can house all the data related to the payment and the asset. This is a very big shift in how data and value is transacted and moved which I'm already seeing create massive efficiencies in how everything works. And it's now clear to me, both from working in the US financial system and with various central banks all over the world, that it's a far superior way for not only central banks to work with each other, but for their commercial banks inside of their ecosystems to work with each other, and for them to eventually work together with the DeFi community to create this one large global internet of contracts. So I think CCIP as a reliable, secure system that can also manage the complexity of more advanced transactions through its relationship with the data protocols within the Chainlink set of standards is in a very unique position to solve these critical stand standards and connectivity problems.